able to start should we just mute ourselves till then is that what you yeah we could we could okay or i can just like oh we could just start <laughs> i think kiloto must uh, not yet joined us but uh, okay let's see thank you for joining us today that, that was lovely i think we're working uh, we're waiting for tilotama i'm not sure if she's going to be here uh he is just calling tilotama then we can start yes because i know everyone's so busy and I think the Lotoma is in uh, Pune. In where? She is. She is in Pune. Yeah, she's not in Mumbai. She's in Pune. Oh, is this Gulshan? Uh, Gulshan, is that you speaking? Yes, that's speaking. Um, oh, I didn't realize that because uh, Ria said um, Tilotama was in Bombay and they were going to have bad weather, but she just sent me a note and she said Tilotama will join in ten minutes. So maybe we'll start. Okay. And then. She's having some um, internet connectivity problems. Yeah, yeah, that's what. Like, and it's raining here in Mumbai, and uh, I suppose it must be pretty bad weather in Pune as well. So that must yeah, must have affected. Uh, I think. Uh, and Gulshan, nice to meet a fellow Kurg. <laughs> oh, you are from Kurg, is it? Yes, I am too. Oh, okay. So shall we start then, guys? We have eleven thirty-six on the clock. Um, I just want to welcome Konkana. And later on, hello. Our thank you, all of our guests. Thank you so much for being here, for taking time out of your busy day. It really means a lot to us at the Indian Film Festival of Cincinnati. So, welcome to week nine of Hangout with the Creatives. Um, this is the at-home wow. series of the Indian Film Festival. My name is Rati Apana. I'm the founder and executive director of the Indian Film Festival of Cincinnati. This year, because of the pandemic, we postponed our festival down to October. But we wanted to keep our um, folks engaged at home and we want to keep the community engaged. And so each week I curate um, a couple of films. And then at the end of the week, we have the group call, the director and the, and the actors, all the creatives, to get the story behind the story. And so I hope all of you are doing well during this pandemic. I'll just start with a very few ground rules. Um, I'm going to start the session by introducing our guests, all three of our guests. Uh, hopefully, Tilotama is already there. Um, if any of our um, folks want to ask a question, just type your name and, um, uh, and your question in the chat, and we'll pick up on it and, um, and call you. Um, make sure when you ask a question to please tell us your name and um, and also sort of wave out because Amit, Rituri and Anita are handling the Zoom session today and they'll be able to zoom in on you. Thank you, Anita and Amit for doing this. Um, so let's start. It gives me great pleasure, guys. It's, it's such an awesome day to have all of you here today uh, from, from the... Um, the film, The Death in the Ganj. Um, I'm going to start with uh, writer, actor, and director, um, Konkana Sen Sharma. Um, Konkana, you are a leading actress of the Indian cinema, especially contemporary cinema. You've acted in over 50 films. You won numerous filmfare and national awards, as well as film festival awards. I was there in New York when your film, The Death in the Ganj, uh, won the award for the best director for this film. And um, none of us really can forget you in that awesome film, Mr. and Mrs. Iyer. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Thank you. You were so powerful in that film, absolutely powerful, and such a darling, too. Um, you know, I can only imagine um, how wonderful it is for you. You've had such a um, stellar career. You started off very early, I think, as a, as a child actor, 
and then mm. you reach out to act. And this, I believe, this is your first, um, first film that you directed and uh, based on, uh, based on um, a memory or a story that you knew. Um, so thank you for being here. And Thanks as, for having us. Oh my gosh, it's my pleasure, really. It's so lovely to have you. Um, I want to now introduce um, Gulchun Devaya. Uh, Gulchun has acted in over 20 films. Many of you might uh, remember him for his role in Malko Dard Nahi Aata, Hota, sorry, <laughs> for which he won a screen award for Best Supporting Actor. He was also nominated for the Filmfare Award for Best Supporting Actor for his intense, really intense roles in films like Shaitan and, and Hate Story. Um, Wilshen acted as Nandu in this in this film, and The Death of the Ganj won several awards, uh, Filmfare Awards. It won an award for Best Supporting Actor to uh, Tilotama Shome as well, as well as the Best um, Debut Director for uh, the film, which was uh, Konkana. So, folks, um, I just want to. And Best, uh, I think Best Cinematography as best well. Best Cinematography. Yes, that's yeah, right. Yeah, one must, um, sure. he's quite the artist. He really, I think. He's sure really a cinematographer. Uh, you should never forget him. <laughs> he was a very important person from the film. That's right. Stella, Stella work, Stella, Stella camera work, Stella. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying that. Um, because I was going to say, uh, my first question is for Konkana. And I was going to say, we just, I just loved your film. I love the setting. I love the costumes and I love the color that you used in your cinematography. I mean, it just evoked that feeling of the 70s. And I know you guys were not around in the 70s. <laughs> I experienced it, right? So it was a pleasant surprise to see you capture all those nuances and hats off to the cinematographer that you have. Um, I want to ask you, Tilotama, I mean, not Tilotama, Konkana, I want to ask you. Um, what fascinated you about the story? What in the story really fascinated you? And then, did the story really take place in the Klaski Ganj? Or did the story really take place in the Klaski Ganj? Ah, yes, right, right. Um, well, uh, firstly, that, thanks for a very a warm uh, introduction. And uh, thanks, Gulshan, that you remembered, uh, you know, uh, She I Shows Award. I can yeah. never forget it. No, no, of course, no, neither can any of us, but it's just that, you know, I won, yeah, I'm much more absent minded. But yeah, absolutely, he's um, contributed so much. Uh, the film, uh, the events actually did take place in McCluskey Gunch. It's kind of based on real life events. And mm -hmm. they did take place in McCluskey Gunch. And for a while, we thought we wouldn't be able to shoot in McCluskey Gunch. We were actually, um, you know, we had done an extensive recce in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, which is very popular for film shoots, mainly because the government used to give a subsidy, probably still does. But we couldn't find any location anywhere. And then we had meanwhile gotten photographs of McCluskey Gunch. Of course, I had seen photographs earlier, um, yeah. family pictures, as well as, you know, some research that we had done. And uh, we were lucky enough, once we went to McCluskey Gunch, we realized we just have to shoot there because nothing else is seeming um, authentic. Nothing else is fitting. It was so particular. Uh, the time and place and setting and all of that. So that was very convenient. Lovely. And the story was uh, told to you by your dad, right? Your father told you the story and it somehow uh, stayed in your mind. Um, That's right. Yeah. What, so did yeah, it well, you see the, uh, the, the, you know, it's kind of uh, in, in Death in the Ganj, what happened is a lot of it is kind of a reimagining of my parents' youth and kind of trying to reconstruct it from stories that I had heard. And, um, you know, all these, so a lot of these characters are just like uh, amalgamations of, you know, like real people, fictional people, some memory, some fabrication. It's just all very mixed up. Like, uh, for example, Gulshan's character Nandu, is, there is a real Nandu, but who's not really like this Nandu. But, so, you know, like, this Nandu is a bit like my dad, a bit like someone else. Uh, yeah. That driving uh, scene that you have with um, Vikrant, with Shutu, is, I had a similar driving experience with my dad. Of course, he didn't whack me, luckily. But uh, I mean, he was, 
<laughs> yeah, you too, right? I think many of us have had this experience with our dads. So a lot of uh, real life is spilled into that. It's just that, um, you know, this real life story of Shutu, uh, that there was, a, uh, there was a younger boy in a group of people who wasn't quite, uh, you know, very assertive or, um, you know, very typically probably, at least how I imagined it. You know, I didn't even know the real person. So uh, it's actually a lot of myself, which is in Shutu. Um, but uh, there was a story like this where a group of people had gone somewhere. One person was kind of bullied in yeah. good humor, probably on the edge of cruelty. Mm-hmm. And months later, unfortunately, he killed himself in the same spot in, in, in uh, McCluskey Ranch. So this, and they had, there had been a planchet and there had been this false prophecy. So this, just these bare bones of the story always fascinated me because it just seemed like such a circular story of, you know, somebody making something false come true. So how, you know, our minds really affect us, how they play with us. Uh, so this always fascinated me. So it was just me and as, as an adult when I had some time just trying to tinker with those characters and with that story to just see how I can make sense of it because I didn't actually know those people except like my parents, of course. Ah. Yeah, so you, you kind of put all these pieces then together. Uh, and you said it, it, you reflected on your own life too a little bit, um, because I see, and there's been a lot of research um, on birth order of siblings and, you know, um, sibling relationships. And you can see how that takes place um, in, in your film with all these older boys and this, and this younger kid. I mean, given it's a joint family sort of situation with all the cousins and, and, all, and all of that. Now, um, have you, is this a reflection of, you're the youngest, are you? Are you I the am sister? the youngest in, yeah. I have an older sister. So ah, you so kind you, of have a younger sister as well, but yeah. And you have a Cincinnati connection too, because your older sister lives That's here. right, she lives in Cincinnati. Yeah, she lives yeah. in Cincinnati. Um, I, have, I haven't met her though, I haven't had the pleasure of meeting her. But I was just wondering, you know, were you able to relate to Shudu's character much more because you were the youngest in the family? Um, I think to a certain extent that I um, felt very much like Shudu in many ways. I mean, I think when I was younger, I was, uh, I still am uh, uh, quite introverted and withdrawn. I, I mean, I've, you know, I've, uh, I, I was introverted, with, withdrawn often, um, you know, a, a bit of a dreamer. Uh, I was also bullied. Uh, So, I mean, of course, you get better with time, you know, with with education, with exposure, with practice, whatever, you get better with time. Unfortunately, Shudu didn't give himself that time. Um, I also had a very uh, wonderful and supportive supportive family, etc. So I don't think it's that younger sibling thing. It's it's just a personalities, you know, uh, who are like that. And I think all of us have felt like that at some point or the other. it's not just, and hopefully that is what is, you know, relatable that, you know, like, I mean, we've all been in positions of less power and we know what that feels like. And yeah. so the idea is not to perpetuate it, Correct. ideally. I could really relate to it too, because I was the youngest in my family. And that's why I kind of Thank asked you, you, that's why I kind of Plus asked you that months. question, because, um, uh, you know, I could sort of relate to that. Um, I wanted to ask you to, um, how was it, how did it feel to direct the film? Did it change you as an actress after you directed your first film? I think I became a much nicer person. <laughs> I think <laughs> I became a more considerate actor. You know, Gulshan, I always tell that uh, story of, I remember, you know, Gulshan's look test and it was in this tiny little cramped office. And yeah, I changed it, you. <laughs> what, what? I changed you, didn't I? <laughs> you changed me. You changed me for the better, Gulshan. Really? I, I just remember that, you know, he, and it was very late. It was taking very long. And yeah. it's often a frustrating time because, you know, in a look test, you know, sometimes I think actors tend to feel more vulnerable because, you know, they're trying something. It may not work. They may not feel comfortable with it, etc. But I remember how uh, even-tempered and uh, accommodating and pleasant it was to work with Gulshan. And I remember thinking, uh, that, you know, I, uh, there have been times when I may have been, I mean, even though I'm largely a very accommodating and uh, obedient actress, I'm not a tant- tantrum throwing type, but, yeah. uh, you know, I saw what a difference it made, you know, just Gulshan's demeanor and the way he was, it helped me 
because you know it was getting late it was anyway stressful and you know it was a very relaxing kind of an element and i uh, think that post uh, directing uh, tilotama is here hi 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 nice and bright nice. Huh? Yeah. 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 welcome i have actually been listening to you guys for quite some time it's been oh. quite amazing <laughs> okay uh, and we living it yeah <laughs> that's what that's what so um, Um, Please continue talking about how amazing Gulshan is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, but it really was. Even I remember the last day, the last shot, three in the morning yeah. for a close-up, and I remember. And you know, honestly, I think I have just been a uh, more considerate uh, uh, actor since I have directed a film. I, I anyway was, I think, largely, but definitely. Yeah, I've never heard anything bad nice. about you. In the, from the business, I've never heard anything bad about you, Coco. From so oh, it sounds it sounds wonderful. It it that absolutely sounds wonderful. I just want to introduce Tilotama um, to our audience as well. Hi, everybody. I'm so sorry. I joined in late. Uh, there's a bit of a Wi-Fi connection issue. Uh, it's been raining really heavy here, and I'm so sorry. yeah. I heard that. I heard that. Um, folks, Tilotama is um, has just joined us. Tilotama was born in Calcutta. She um, grew up all over India because she traveled with her dad, who was in the Air Force. Um, she studied uh, theater in um, New York. Am I right, Tilotama? You studied theater in New York, and um, at, at New York drama therapy, actually. drama therapy and i believe you even worked with convicts um in yes, new after i graduated after you graduated and then moved back to uh, india um tilotama we absolutely um love the films that you've acted in she's acted in over 50 films won several national and uh, film fair awards um we saw no no not at all <laughs> i haven't i haven't won a single i think uh, confusing i haven't won a single uh, film fair award uh, or a national award um, that's uh, that's konkana she's won so many there's no space that's in her it. house for them now uh, but because of konkana's film i got nominated for film fair for the first time yeah. and uh, uh, and it meant a lot because i've acted in so many films but had never been nominated for any indian uh you know award and it felt like uh it took a friend uh to make a film in which i could be portrayed in a way which was acceptable i guess to the indian audience you know so uh, i so it felt like yeah. won the best supporting actress award for this film am i right uh, for film fair was nominated for it you were nominated for it yes we absolutely loved your acting you did a great thank job you. <laughs> thank you We had the pleasure of screening your film, sir, last uh, last year, and I believe, ah. sir, yeah, and I believe, sir, was one of those films that went to Cannes, and uh, yes. we absolutely loved, loved that film as well. Um, thank thank you. you so much for being here with us. Um, another film that I'm going to ask you about uh, is uh, the one that you did with Irfan. In fact, both you and um, Konkana have acted with Irfan, the late actor. Um, Konkana and Life in the Metro, which I believe you won an award for, right? And yeah. um, you, Tilotama, for uh, Song of the Scorpion, which I absolutely loved. Um, so I'm going to deviate a little bit from the movie and ask you guys, both of you, um, and Gulshan too. I don't know if Gulshan had the opportunity to work with Irfan, um, mm-hmm. but. What what was it like? Was there what, what was he like? Was he easy? Was he difficult? Was was he any easy actor to be with? Coco, do you want to go first? You want me to go first? Yeah, you okay. can go. First. Can I go first um, since I have not worked with yes, him? Please. <laughs> okay, go I'll go first um, since I have not worked with him. I have. Please. Um, Uh, an actor when he passed away is when i think actors like me realized how important he is in yeah. our lives yeah uh, because uh, i've met him a bunch of times uh, i've talked to him spent some time like you know 5 minutes here 15 minutes there generally yeah. had a small talk and him being appreciative of my work and you know, telling me that i'm doing well 
that he likes my work and he saw me in a film that he really enjoyed. So it's really, you know, I've only had a few warm conversations with him and uh, that's how I remember. But then when he, when he passed, uh, it was uh, painful and I wept because I realized how important he was uh, to people like me. What an inspiration he was because his work meant something. His mm -hmm. life meant something. And unconsciously, it had influenced us. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't try to become something. He took his time. And people eventually loved him for who he was. Uh, he didn't pretend to be anything else. Uh, he tried. And he's been around a long time. And a lot of his films, and I, I do remember when I was uh, doing a lot of work on stage, uh, I, had, I, I used to watch his films and go and try some of the things that he used to do. Not in terms of like, imitate him but then in a particular scene he did something and that's how I learned how to sort of you know act by watching people like him so unfortunately for me I never got the opportunity to work with him but at least I was fortunate enough to have experienced him uh, face to face and had conversations with him and I was fortunate that his work inspired my you know, what's so fascinating is that, you know, he made time for people and he was able to, you know, make that time for, for different actors, irrespective of um, where their station in life was. And I, I, at least that's what I've read. And I, I, I'm going to ask um, Tilotama and Konkana to jump in on that. Um, you know, the other day, um, somebody was telling me a dream. And I was imagining it as a scene in a film. And there was an elderly gentleman, about 50, and I was imagining Irfan's face. And then realized that we are not going to see him in ah. new roles. And it was such a great sense of, uh, you know, loss. In, you know, it's in, in, in the namesake in the film when he dies. Yeah. I remember it happens very rarely that uh, you, know, you miss a character. You know, by his absence, uh, you know, you miss that character. Uh, it's also um, Mira's filmmaking and the novel itself. But I think a lot of it is, is Irfan. I had a wonderful relationship with him. We did quite a few films together. In fact, early in our careers, we did a few terrible films together. And I would keep telling him that, you know, I'm only doing this film because you said you're doing it. And then he said, but uh, don't go by what I'm saying. And then, so we had, this was the kind of, you know, very easy kind of a friendship, not a very in-depth one, uh, you know, but... Um, uh, so we, I think we've done about five or six films together out of which I think three have not released or ever will. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we've always had a very nice, easy kind of a working relationship. And he was not, not someone who really, uh, it seemed to me that he didn't take, uh, uh, when I worked with him, he didn't take himself, you know, uh, so seriously. And he was easy about life, which was a nice, relaxing, wonderful quality and I could relate. Yeah, lovely, lovely. Lovely. And Tilothama too has, um, that was a stunning movie too that uh, Tilothama did, the song of Kisaka. Yes. Really, really nice. Um, with with Irfan, but I don't know if she's there. Is Tilothama here? Yeah? Yes, yes sure. uh, yeah. we did Go a ahead. film called Shadows of Time. That's when I first met him. I, it was um, 2002. And uh, I, I remember I had so much, you know, I was preparing for my master's in English literature and uh, I had I think, I, think it was, I think it was my exam, my master's exam, and I was so busy studying between takes. And uh, Irfan had, uh, I think his warrior had just, you know, come out and he wasn't the big phenomena that, you know, he is uh, known today. Uh, and uh, between takes, I would be studying and trying to finish some another 400 page book. And, mm -hmm. uh, and Irfan would come and tell me, hey, I'm Irfan. Uh, do, you, do you want to chat for some time? Uh, or you just want to uh, read today also? And like, I'm so sorry. I have to read today also because I have to read every day. Because I, even if I read every day, I still won't be able to finish my coursework. And uh, I'm really tensed and, you know, I have to finish. And, and then again, another day I saw also he opened the door. He said, okay, again, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm studying. And uh, finally he came again, you know, lunch break time. And he said... Listen, I know you're studying, but my shoot is done in two days or three days. So I will have this conversation with you now if it's okay, because I've been trying to get, uh, you know, uh, but you're always studying. 
And so I'm like, yeah, okay, sure, sure. Uh, what is it? And he said, you know, I fell in love with this director. I did this film called, uh, he did, you know, he referred to Mira's film, Salam Bombay. And uh, he said, I did this film. I fell in love with her. And I really want to work with her again. But it's been some, you know, uh, I don't know, I think 10 or 14, of, like a long time. He said, I've been waiting for a long time to uh, work with her. But she's not returning my emails now. And uh, has her number changed? Can you write to her and ask her to work with me? Because you just did Monsoon Wedding. So, so I was like, yeah, sure. I'll send her an email. I have an email. And uh, he said, show me the email. What email is it? I said, I don't know. I'll have to, you know, we didn't have smartphones then. I went back, checked, showed him the email. He was like, this is not the one she has given me. Oh, she's not given me her latest email. And I've been writing to her. And, you know, and, uh, uh, and then, of course, I wrote to Mira. And then, of course, time passed. And the next thing I know after the shoot of Shadows of Time, where I just, this was my only interaction with him. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the next I see his namesake on the big screen and I was studying in New York then and I, I go to watch the film and, uh, and it was, uh, you know, it was just incredible to see what he'd done in that film. I really loved him in that film. He made, I loved him so much. I missed home so much that soon after I saw the film, I uh, went and quit my job in New York, told my boss, I'm quitting, I'm going back home. I'm really missing my parents and I definitely don't want to get a call uh, from one of my parents saying that, you know, one of them has passed away and now I need to book a 16 hour long flight and get there and then leave the parent who's surviving and come back to this country. I, I you know, and so I quit my job and, uh, and, and then I think two weeks later, Irfan, Tabu and Mira were uh, doing a talk at New York Times and he was on stage and so was she and all of them. And then the Q&A started and the lights came on the audience. And after, I don't know how many years, in that audience of some 3,000, 4,000 people in Lincoln Center, he spotted me sitting somewhere, even though my hair was cut. And, you know, I, I was really far off, you know, one of the nosebleed seats. And uh, he saw me and he, and he said, Hello, Tamar, is that you? And I was like, yeah, it's me. He said, please meet me backstage and I went and met him backstage and he looked at me and he just said so is your affair with New York is the love story love affair with New York over are you going back home and I was like he doesn't he doesn't know me you know but this is a fan for me he has I never thought of him as a friend I always thought of him as a colleague and uh, it was only in the last one year that we act I actually felt I was a friend because we would exchange messages with each other. But I always thought we were just colleagues. But he had this uncanny, uh, and it's just not me. It's so many people who've met him and worked with him. Uh, he has this uncanny uh, ability to see through you and uh, see things that you haven't told anyone about, you know. And uh, but why I share this why I share this incident about him wanting to work with Mira is because I really get it. You know, when you fall in love with, you know, that some films and some memories and some directors, you really fall in love with them. And you, you want to replicate that experience so bad because it's like a golden era, you know, and it doesn't happen all in all the films and that you do. And, uh, so I understood, I understood what he felt in working with Mira because it's been more than 20 years since I did Monsoon Wedding and I worked with Mira and I'm dying. I'm dying to work with uh -huh. her again. But I, I never understood why he was dying to work with Mira back then in 2002. And I was like, oh, okay, you're so odd to ask another actor to write to a director and you know, send an email. But I would have done, you know, exactly that. And he's, and I think he's, uh, he, uh, the other thing I think he's really taught me and which is why I thought I would, I wouldn't be like, he's really with me, you know, every other day I went for a walk and I saw this bird, which I found out later is a minor starling and has very, these thin legs and walks in a very elegant kind of manner. And I was like, my God, this bird reminds me of Irfan. And I started walking towards the bird to photograph it with my phone and the bird would keep walking away. 
then I would take a few more steps and the bird would walk away a few more steps and finally I told the bird, listen, I have to send this photograph to Irfan's, to Shutappa, to Irfan's wife, so you better wait. I just want to take this photograph for a second. And the bird waited, I took the photograph and I was like, this is all I needed to do and this is what Irfan would tell me, you know. He said, in the scene, we are so busy with the actors who are there in it, but there's the place, there are the people, you know, there are the birds, there are the trains that are going outside. You know, just this thing to communicate um, with uh, everything around you, I think Irfan really taught me that without really ever, you know, making a meal about it or giving a lecture about it, but through the films that you did. Yeah. Sorry, very long answer. No, that's a lovely experience. And I, you know, thank you. Thank you for sharing that, um, all of you. Uh, for sharing a little bit of Irfan. I want to I wanna pull you guys back to Konkana and this film. And I, I want to ask, um, I want to ask Konkana actually, how did you put together the cast? And then version, what attracted you to the script? How, what, how did I put, put together the cast? Yeah. Is how that did what you, you ask? these characters I and mean, how do you say well Shutu is going to be Vikram Masi you know what right. did you what did you kind of uh, see in Vikram because I think he did a fabulous job and um, yeah Vikrant Vikrant Masi how did you um, zero in on him um well with with Vikrant I had seen his work in a film called Lutera uh, where he has a very small role, but every time he came on screen, I really enjoyed looking at, uh, I enjoyed his presence on screen very much. And I remember thinking whenever his scenes came on that, who's this boy? Because I had never seen or heard of him before. Mm -hmm. So I would see Vikram and I'd be like, hey, who's this? And he wasn't, you know, a, a male lead or a female lead, especially in the way sometimes Hindi films are shot and presented. It's not like he was heroed out in any way as such, you know, but he still shone through. And um, and then after that, I was working with Alankrita on Lipstick Under My Burkha, where he he also uh, acted in that film. And Alankrita had also mentioned that, you know, he's very good and, you know, you were looking for someone. Um, so then yeah. these things kind of came together. And interestingly, he was about to approach me to do one short film that he was producing. When I said, no, but please read this. So I was very sure that I wanted to, uh, about Vikrant and my producers, uh, were fantastic about uh, that casting, at least, which is great uh, because, uh, yeah, they they believed in Vikrant, I guess. Doesn't always happen. Yeah, I, 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 very, I was very, very impressed with this character. I wanted to ask Gulshan, Gulshan, um, what did you admire most about Konkana as a director? That allowed you. This is going to be a long answer. Mm -hmm. I'm warning everyone. You're asking Gulshan about what he loves about Coco. It's going to be a very long answer. Yes, I yeah, Let's hope so, uh, Tilly. Let's hope so. French, French butter. French butter. French Even before that, I, I just want to say that yeah. in your role as Nandu, you played in a very measured way. I mean, we really hated Nandu because he, he had absolutely no empathy. And at a point when he began to show some empathy for Shutu, you realize it wasn't really empathy, but it was like, like not, you know, back up and, and get going with it. So, uh, but I, yeah, I, it was a very measured role, and you, you did that so well. Um, Thank you. We came away really, you know, uh, feeling, empathizing with you in that role as well, and understanding you in that role. And so I know. You know, great directors always bring great performances out of uh, out of actors. So, I wanted you to talk a little bit about. Um, um, I I was curious to find what Coco would make actually, because uh, it's uh, it, I don't need to explain how wonderful an actor she is. Uh, we all know that, and we all love and love and admire her for that. Um, it's just that when I met her, um, she just there was something about the way um, that she. Uh, that the story really meant something to her and, and it's I was very curious I didn't really understand how she's uh, you know would, would like to say this or how she would be as a director but I was very curious to find out um, of course I would have loved to play Shudu <laughs> but if I was as small as a sparrow <laughs> perhaps <laughs> yeah too tall many things yeah yeah, yeah. so that's uh, but it was a wonderful script I read it and uh, and I think what really attracted me and what really interested me was uh, 
I would have also loved to play Vikram's part and kind of explore the manly man, you know, the, the men among men sort of a thing, or the man child, uh, that thing. But that didn't happen. I mean, we were in discussion, but then that was Ranveer's part. It was uh, offered to Ranveer, and I suppose, you know, uh, he did a great job, and that was his part, and I, I love him. Um, I was curious to see, and also it's such a great cast that they put together, and I, I told myself that I'm never going to get an opportunity to work with such a fabulous ensemble. Um, yeah. Be it Vikrant or Omji, it was one of the last films uh, uh, the late Mr. Rom Puri uh, acted in. Uh, it was fabulous to see him, his experience. Uh, he was all over the place, but then once, once the camera starts rolling, it's just like, it's just magic. And uh, Tanuja Ji, Tanu Anji, Pilotama, who I'm, I'm a huge admirer of Pilotama, and I always uh, wanted to work with her, and I really feel that you know that we're just getting started, and there's so much more that we need to do together. Uh, and there was Kalki, who was a friend of mine. There was Ranveer uh, Shodi, who was uh, I really admire all of these people as actors. And Jim Saar, who I've seen on stage, was a fantastic actor on stage. He had just started doing film and was getting like you know, and we. So it was a great cast. It was a great cast. The producers seemed to be great. Everybody was was like making, we, we were making a movie, you know, we weren't making a film, it was cinema and it was just, and this is why we do it, because we enjoy telling these stories, we enjoy making movies and it seemed like that I have to be part of this, it really kind of attracted me uh, to it and also I was curious to find out what sort of a director <laughs> will turn out to be and I must say that uh, it was the movie, one of the best experiences I've ever had. I've done a few films, but if I have to pick one, uh, saying which is the best film I've ever done, it has to be that. Oh my God! How can you say that, Gulshan? No, 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 nothing. Like I told you, I'm just like buttering you up so that you give me another. Yeah, one. because I've already praised you, and bichara kya bolega? I'm sitting here in front yeah. now. How are you only going to say nice things? But yeah, I just yeah, wanted yeah. to. Add... <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, I just wanted to add one thing, which is that you know this. Uh, I think that Gulshan could have done a very good job of uh, you know um, uh, Ranveer's so, role, Vikram. Yeah, and I think that uh, Gulshan would have brought a, a very interesting uh, element to even had he played Shuntu. He would have been able to do that. No, but but no, I no. don't know. <laughs> but no, but I don't know. Are you wait now? But I don't know that the that anybody else would have been able to play Nandu. Because Nandu is a very nuanced character who's like not very clearly good or bad. You know what I mean? Like Shuntu is a very obviously kind of a you know Vichara. No, there are very, very many interesting characters. I mean, really it's uh, I mean if an actor was given the choice to pick that I think would be uh, Difficult to pick also because the like there are lots of really interesting characters, so that was never a problem. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, and also that problem. Nandu is a very interesting brand of masculinity, which is yeah. seeming to be a nice guy while at the same time embodying many problematic yeah. parts of a regressive or a patriarchal kind of person. That's true, and then, like I think we've all experienced that kind of masculinity from other people, and my. Uh, interpretation was that you know to draw from experience and then remember a few things that have happened in my life and then try and the car scene is just, that's happened so it's just like we <laughs> shot it over three days Gulu you remember Gulu remember we yeah. shot it over three days or no we just right? shot over one day yeah no we definitely shot it over two days I'm bargaining I think we did all the interior portions one day and then maybe the exterior portions we did another there. day yeah and there were sound mm -hmm. problems as well and we shot it another day and I'm just saying this once again That's to say that these two did such problems. a great job how long did the shoot last for this film? 31 days 31 31 listen we went will one you know this answer she knows this answer for sure yeah. <laughs> my producer <laughs> said you have only 30 days in Mankleski Ganj now you do I After stayed in, in I stayed for 35 days, so I thought like, yeah. <laughs> so I, I have a question uh, from Anu Mitra, um, and Anu, if you're there, we, you can ask it or I can ask it on your behalf. Are you there, Anu? Yes, I am. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome to Cincinnati, uh, Tilottama and Konkona and Gulshan. Uh, so happy to have you over here. Uh, it's much better. Very hot in Cincinnati. 
Um, so I was fascinated uh, with the cinematography. Um, of course, the overall direction, the actors and all of that. And I felt that the movement of time was so beautifully captured in the ambiance and the mood and the dread. Uh, and I, I felt that time was also very, moving very, very gradually through the character characterization of these different people. Um, in the sense that even though there was the popular group who acted very rashly and, uh, you know, very spontaneously and very thoughtlessly, there was still a lot of intentionality behind what they were doing. And this was reflected in the, in the slow passage of time. Mm. And in Shutu and Mashima, uh, uh, in their characters, uh, which I felt were the most empathetic, um, you know, time was developed differently in the way in which they, they were moving through the house and through the landscape and how the camera was, uh, uh, you know, zooming in and, of course, your direction, Kankuna. So I was wondering if you had any thoughts on that. Um, uh, it, it was very, very well done. And uh, nice. I'm, I'm so happy that uh, we get to talk to you about all of this and also nice. to have seen the movie too. So, you know, the time actually is very interesting because like, I mean, in the sense that, you know, there, we have so many experiences of time and then we're doing a period film. Like what is, we don't really, I don't know that we really experience time in a linear fashion. I mean, we also experience time in a linear fashion, but time can also be like a very emotional thing, uh, you know, in terms of like you remember time or time slowing down because of tension or speeding up because of anticipation, whatever. It's almost like time is an emotion. It's almost like that. But uh, not that I thought of this consciously at, the, at that time. Uh, it also helped that in a sense time was like standing still in McClessiganj because it was like a forgotten old town. Uh, it was very convenient for us to capture it from the 70s. <clears throat> but um, also because all these, so, uh, all these different characters were not in the same emotional space either. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like uh, there's some of them who were, you know, here for a happy relaxed holiday and there were others who were tortured, you know, um, I mean, were feeling... Uh, anguished I mean and um, so I think that they probably then experienced time differently and perhaps that's what came across to you mm. no? <laughs> maybe Thank you. yes and also through the music uh, <coughs> you know, uh, the background yeah, music was very very so it was all very supportive you know I, I felt that the character development and the cinematography and the music it was all leading to an integrated uh, emotional feeling, you know, taking us along. So, right, yeah. right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. It was, it was a very well paced movie as well. I have a quick question for uh, Tilotama. Tilotama, tell us um, you worked with a lot of directors, and if there's one thing that stands out in, in Konkana's direction. What would you say would be that brought the best out in you? I mean, you did such a fabulous job as the wife of Nandu in the film. And tell out the maths for you. As Bonnie. Uh, one thing that stands out, uh, you know, I'm very blinded uh, when it comes to Konkona uh, and not just uh, because she's, you know, a very dear friend, but even before I had actually, uh, you know, um, got to know her, I'm, re I'm really, you know, I've always been quite uh, in awe of her talent. Um, but once we became friends, uh, when she wanted to make a film, I was just so afraid. I was afraid of all the difficulties she would have to face, you know. It was so tough to make a film. And a film with so many characters. I had read the script. And when she, like, I, I, for me, this film was very close to my heart because I couldn't believe, like, someone... Um, uh, I mean, I know the legacy that uh, Konkana comes from, but, you know, still, you know, making your film or film which is not in Hindi and doesn't have all the commercial, you know, whatever, um, uh, you know, things that need, uh, you know, film needs in order to, you know, raise money and shoot. So when she actually uh, wrote that script, when she actually was able to raise the money for it, when she was actually shoot, every step of it felt like so unreal. It felt like such a sense of, uh, like it was unmitigated joy for me. I cannot compare shooting for that film with any other experience of any other film 
because I don't think I ever felt so personally invested in uh, in in the success or you know a failure of something. And I'm generally quite a sincere person, so like I would feel it, I would feel quite sincerely even towards like you know uh, people whose films I mean you know like whatever you know what I mean right? And mm-hmm. but like I was genuinely like uh, um, I was really taken aback by uh, how much I. cared for the film because i actually felt like her uh, you know i actually believe that uh, konkana is uh, a, a lot of her issue too and uh, and a lot of the way she observes the people in her lives and the kind of person she is the kind of character that she you know she has written in that film i was in love with that script i was really i was so taken aback i was so like filled up with so much gratitude when she offered me the part of bonnie because uh, you know i would have done anything uh, for her in that film and to be offered a part of a character which has a name that is as happy as bonnie when all i get usually is very tragic and intense uh, you know and rural characters and really poor to not get offered the maid in in that film and instead get offered bonnie was like you know and she had, like i was wearing a beautiful silk pantic sari she made me look lovely because she, you know uh, she uh, she uh yeah uh you know uh um I, sorry i'm going to try and be a little bit more articulate but what is it that i really liked about her i i i think her her sense of imagination the way her mind works and the way uh uh you know the, the just the the world of that film um was just endlessly fascinating for me and i feel like because she's an actor she knows exactly what she wants and uh and that uh you know that is both a gift and a challenge and for me that was the most exciting thing to uh to actually watch um and i i really admire how she um balanced both because i really haven't worked with uh directors who are actors and uh it was the first experience and i saw how she really like i just saw i saw how she uh, made it into an advantage uh and uh, and that was very 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 exciting because she wow. she she can act out all our parts you know she can single handedly like go from in the same scene play five people's characters because she knows them all she knows uh, them so well so when uh, you know when you walk into a room where your director has already seen them felt them lived with them and you are neighbors with them you know the people who actually were those people uh you know we were living in jharkhand and our neighbor was the gentleman on whose you know character ranveer's character was based deepak was based on so uh it was uh, she just brought, she it, it's her you know she has this certain goodwill and this magnet for good things to come together and so to work in an experience where um someone inspires that kind of you know love and support yeah. was was Lovely. really very special Yeah. You know I was very lucky to have Tilottama on board I just want to quickly add because you know actually I think on that film she she was the closest friend I had on that uh, set I got to know everyone else I already knew everyone else a little bit Yeah Sorry I said actually you got to know Gulshan right <laughs> Yeah of course Gulshan and everyone else I mean just that I didn't know uh, the others as well I mean they're all we're all from the same locality so to speak and we thought we could even call it Yari Road Productions because everyone's from around yes. everyone's neighbors Uh, with each other and um but so it was a wonderful experience to actually share the script with Tilottama early on when I was just interested in her feedback as a script and then to kind of have her support she was with me on the whole journey of like in the sense of like then getting the funding and then you know actually doing the workshops and the rehearsals then actually shooting going to Makassi and shooting and she herself was very unwell at that time and i know that she was suffering and she couldn't and there was a long three hour commute every day it's ridiculous mm-hmm. uh but uh, yeah she was uh, amazingly supportive and a real trooper uh yeah so thanks seemed to have pulled together a really wonderful set of people as well um, and so that was any um any set uh, anita rituri has a question now for you anita would you like to ask it or if you're there or would you like me to i'm here at the and i can ask the question Okay. Um I just wanted to say I I I saw this movie a couple of years ago and then I saw it again this morning. At our festival. At our festival. Yeah. Yes. 
And okay. I and I and I loved it then, and I loved it now. And uh, congratulations for a great movie. Um, I had two word related things. Um, McCluskey Gunge, Rathi and I actually Googled it to figure out where it was, and its history is quite interesting. Yeah. And another one was Tilotma. A couple of years ago, we had a Mahabharat uh, party here where everybody dressed as characters from the Mahabharat, and I was dressed as Tilotma the Apsara. Oh, hey. <laughs> That was just a side thing. Um, but my question about the movie was, um, and I wrote it down also, um, that how, there's so many different diverse threads that you had to work with. This is probably mostly for Konkana. Um, and you had different stories, different personalities. You had the music, which I mean, I love the, like the Kasi music and all of that, the different stories, different music and the cinematography. And then the stories you included like the servant. And then Purnima comes in with a, Hazur ke Khajur. I mean, and so you put some humor into it also. Hazur ke Khajur is Tilotama's <laughs> joke. She wrote that joke like on set. That's right. That's right. right. Sorry, really yeah. Funny. But you know, I just, my question was this, all of these different threads, and you said 31 days of shooting. Um, did you just sit and imagine them together and kind of know them before you started? Or nowadays, everybody would use a spreadsheet or something or some kind of notes. How did you get it all to come together so well? That's my question. Oh, how nice. Thank you so much. Um, I think spreadsheets and all, it's like that. Nowadays, movie making is like that, I think. Like earlier, it was a lot more like, you know, my, my, my cinematographer, Shisho, who's fantastic. He, he used to say, uh, what did he say? Khata kolam chobi jaina. Which means, kagaz or kalam se film aap bana nahi sakte. You know, because everything, you know, nowadays, the ADs and the producers and all, everything, there are like 100 emails, everything is CC'd. Like, you know, it's all very corporatized, I think. Uh, but that doesn't guarantee a good film anyway. But it's nice to be organized regardless. Um, I was saying that uh, in, uh, uh, you know, uh, so in my case, what happened is, I, I think this is also uh, what Tilota may have been referring to is that, you know, I what happened because I never anyway planned to direct a film or write this film or do anything like this. So, and I also was a little... Um, fearful and nervous because it was my first film and I have no technical training. I have no training in like, you know, being behind the camera or in front of. So I was a little uh, nervous about that whole aspect of it. And one of the things my mom had said uh, was that, you know, if you can communicate the image and the idea, the, and especially the image that you want to your HODs, then they can actually help you with their skill sets to execute, execute that. So as a result, I think um, because of my own fears, my script was very detailed. I mean, there are actually shots described and written, um, which I, I have, we have then gone and shot those. So there's very little actually, uh, which I think can be sometimes stifling for the actors, because I already have the whole thing imagined in my head in a particular way. And I feel like it has to be this particular way, because then these other other things have to happen and other other things have to follow. But uh, and what happens is that one, when you want to make a film that is a little different, you get, uh, you know, you have very limited resources. And the biggest resource is time. So what happens is, you know, when you want to be, um, uh, you know, it would be lovely to be spontaneous, but you know, one has to have the time because what if it doesn't work? So it's very important to plan everything, you know, down. So in that sense, I think I already had, uh, you know, and it's very easy to then communicate it to all departments, you know, if you have everything planned and written down. Uh, and I'm talking about like at the screenplay level, which is, mm -hmm. and I, so, and then you have to be very efficient when you're making a, small, a short film. I remember one of the days our wonderful production designer Siddharth Siru, he asked me that, uh, do you uh, want to get an award for fastest film shot? Because we were going so fast. <laughs> and I didn't want to shoot like that at all. But you know, choices are limited. Thank you. That was a wonderful answer. Because I just wonder, I said, you know, nowadays everything, yeah, like, like you said, email and spreadsheets and all of that. But um, this was very compact. You know, and, and, and yet there were so many nuances in the way I people... I know, but the thing is that, you know, it... Sorry, I was just saying that even when I was editing it with Manas, even the edit didn't actually... There, it didn't depart hugely from the screenplay, I, which was slightly, only slightly disappointing because, you know, one had heard of and been part of films which had changed in the edit and magical things were happening on set and magical things were happening on the edit table, etc. So those things do happen and they are also very happy stories. Um, but... In this particular case, it was uh, not. <laughs> All the screen. That way. Yeah. 
It was all the screenplay. But yeah, but thank you. Because I, I watched it again this morning and I thought, oh, this is actually a really good movie. You know, it's just like, that was, you know, my, the, when you walk away from it, that's what you come out with. Oh, that was such, so well done. The acting was so well done. The music was appropriate. You put in kabaddi and, and singing and the, the dynamics of a family, which is so, the, people, the way people look at each other, you know, the kalki <laughs> reality of the situation uh, so which is uh, not quite nice actually it was a very quaint little place i mean it has its it has its beauty but it also has uh, an ugly side which is very apparent uh, so one cannot ignore that and of course we were sufficiently distracted because we were working there mm -hmm. but the uh, plasti ganj is in jharkhand and uh, the political situation over there with the maoists and the government is not very pleasant at all so uh -huh. Which is, uh, I mean, I don't know why I'm saying this, but then I guess yeah. it's important for people to know sometimes because we imagine we see so much beauty in, uh, in the film, right? And then, <laughs> you, but it's yeah. like there's a, you know, there's a lot of destruction also around which uh, doesn't really one cannot cannot escape from. So that didn't really I couldn't connect with that. So that was really strange and it was a bit disturbing. But yeah, the little bit of the cold weather and some of the trees and the, the houses in the middle of surrounded by trees did remind me of uh, where I come from. Yeah, thank you for saying that. Nargis, uh, Nargis has a question for uh, Tilotama. I know you have several questions, but I'm trying to get a few people in. So your question to Tilo, uh, I'm sorry, to Tilotama or to both? I can ask both, but I can ask whichever. Yeah. If you don't mind asking one so we can get to. Yes, yes. Um, hi, oh my God, this is like a dream come true. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, yeah, um, so um, I really like, like love your work, both of you, and I follow you. And a lot of your movies, it's so hard to find them here. They don't get to released in the movie theater. And then, you know, some of the platform, we have Netflix and Amazon here. And it's so, like, I really need, like, so uh, basically my question is, do you guys have challenge to get a distribute in the US in the movie theater? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a ch I mean, I can speak for myself, uh, the kind of films that I've done. It's, uh, it's really, a, it's uh, largely, uh, it's really, it's like going to battle and uh, with very little. And, you know, you have to just come out alive. And it's a miracle. Every time a film gets made, I feel, my goodness, we actually shot it. Oh, my God, we actually finished shooting it. Oh, my goodness, it's actually having a release. And then when people say things like, oh, did you feel bad? It was a limited release. Or do you feel bad? It never released in India, but released everywhere else. Or that it released in, in Europe. I'm like, no, actually, I don't feel bad at all. Because I just feel like, you know, there's a, uh, there are all, you know, there's just a multiplicity of stories. And uh, some stories are... Uh, you know have a different journey and a different destiny and uh, it's but it's always been challenging it's been challenging from the beginning for the last 20 years it's never been easy and, and yet the joy is in how each film finds us finds a home finds an audience despite it you know i think the, the indian sorry i'm just just like to add a few things like you know when, when you look at the overseas indian diaspora uh, mostly films that are perceived to be bollywood they get some kind of a distribution. So sometimes films, smaller films, uh, which or like a film in like a Death in the Gunch, that's my cat, Ida. <laughs> <laughs> so, so sometimes films like Death in the Gunch or smaller films uh, find it very difficult because they're not categorized as Bollywood. So uh, that becomes a little difficult also. And the only avenue we have is to sort of go to film festivals, which is also expensive. Uh, but sometimes we are lucky that we are able to, like you know, showcase at uh, say the Toronto International Film Festival or or um, some other festival like New York uh, Film Festival, which also are, are good for business because you can crack deals and 
look at some kind of distribution and stuff like that. But it's hard because a lot of them can't really afford to go there. Uh, so I don't know. Hopefully the situation will improve. And with the, I mean, cinema is still should be experienced in a hall, sitting with strangers. But uh, unfortunately, I think uh, at least a lot of filmmakers and a lot of storytellers are finding an avenue with OTT platforms right now. So I think, um, I mean, the whole uh, the concept of the when we used to fight to try and take a film and showcase it in different festivals and try and get some kind of a distribution for it. That's, I don't think it's going to happen very much now. Uh, but at the same time, I think you may get to see a lot more interesting and uh, different voices emerging from India, different kinds of stories coming from India, not at, in the cinemas, but on Amazon or Netflix or such platforms. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's such a huge part of what festivals uh, really uh, ought to be doing is to try and find distributorship for the filmmakers, because that's the reason why we have film festivals. It's really for the filmmakers. Um, thank you. And it does. It really does help. I don't think it, if it wasn't for film festivals, I don't think my films would have had distribution. Mm. You know, and it, it makes me, I don't think I would have had a career if it wasn't for film festivals, actually. So I definitely can say that, uh, you know, for those who feel that they can't have a sustainable career doing independent, smaller films, uh, it's not true. It's, it's just a little bit harder. But uh, there are definitely a lot of programmers and uh, who, are work, who have worked really hard so that uh, films like these actually uh, do get a home. I mean, can we do more? I mean, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um. I had a, uh, Om Srivastava would like to ask a question. Om, Om uh, would you like to uh, ask? Sure. Um, well, first, uh, thank you all for, for making this movie. This, the experience of watching this was, was a slow burn. And I think I thought I knew what the movie was going to be early on, and I definitely didn't. And I was thoroughly exhausted and drained by the end, as intended, I believe. Um, <laughs> I also have to echo uh, Nargis earlier. I'm a huge fan of, of all your work, you know, I'm a big fan of Shaitan and, and really love uh, watching Sir at the film festival last year and I'm eager to see what you guys continue to make. So my question is for Konkana, um, did the growing global cultural awareness and critiques of mental health as a taboo subject that we don't really talk about and toxic masculinity directly contribute to the immediacy or shape the creative process of this film or when you guys did it or was it just kind of happenstance that the story happened to explore those themes so in depth and successfully and maybe Goshen and Dolotoma can speak on why these are important themes or or if that influenced taking on the role or how you guys thought about the project as well thanks right thank you um I think that when I was um when, uh, you know, when I was writing at the time or just imagining the world and creating the characters and things, it's not like I had planned uh, on dealing with issues of mental health or toxic masculinity. Um, at least I wasn't aware of it uh, myself. Um, but, um, I mean, these things slowly emerged, I think. Um, you know, in the process of writing and finding these characters, these things slowly emerge. So it, it I mean, I, I was trying to find a way to explain to myself um, the death of this character. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, I think I was, um, and, and, and these are the, these are the, um, and, and these are the, th the themes that, the themes were actually in the sense that it was loneliness. It was wanting to belong, you know, and being unable to belong. And what are the reasons for that? And these are things like, you know, I think we've all experienced. So it, I didn't plan it like that, but I mean, that is what emerged, I think. Maybe Gulshan and Tilutama would like to say. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure. Like, I think we also, within the industry, we, uh, there's a certain, this toxic masculinity, and, you know, we do experience it. And I grew up around the such things, and these things that happened to Shutu has happened to me. I mean, it's very really ridiculous, but I was really bullied for being too pretty. So, uh, but it's, uh, I think as a society, as a cinema is, does have, sometimes it's overestimated that, you know, the power of cinema, but sometimes it's underestimated as well. Uh, a film such as like, uh, there was a film that was, uh, 
release last year, which did rather well, but it was it really divided people. Uh, it was called Kabir Singh. So it kind of celebrates in like really uh, a, a kind of toxic masculinity, and then uh, a lot of people had issues with that. And I think a film like Death in a Gun is the opposite of that. Um, so it's really important for us to question things uh, as to what is uh, what's the right thing to do. You know, at least you should we should be able to sort of come up with ask us of the right questions. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really important that you know filmmakers make films that are socially relevant and also talk more about the awareness of mental health because a lot of people deny that it could be a problem. Uh, and a lot of people are like, um, I had an issue going to a, a therapist and seeking counseling and I, because I was like, no, there's nothing wrong with me. It's not, and so that we need to sort of get rid of that attitude as well. So many times depression is really surprising that, you know, sometimes uh, people tell me, uh, very educated people tell me that it's a state of mind. Depression is a state of mind, but it's not uh, an illness. So I think um, we need certain stories and uh, uh, it's completely different now. If you look at Shutu and like, you know, what happens to Shutu, one would also imagine that, you know, was he, I mean, there was a, there was a, was there any, uh, Thing of mental illness or depression or something like that. Uh, so one can also look at it that way because it's not very apparent in the film, but I mean, you always look at things and what happened to him and say that, okay, maybe he, oh, maybe, maybe he had mental illness, maybe he was really depressed. Nobody really knew that. So mm -hmm. I think these are very relevant stories and which, which, are, which need to be told and we need, we need more such stories which will bring a certain awareness about mental health and depression. Yeah, um, um, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, you know, I actually don't feel that films have to tell, uh, you know, uh, are responsible for, uh, you know, uh, really throwing light on um, any, any particular issue. But I, I feel a good film, uh, it throws light on the human condition. And if it does it well, it, it is going to be about, it is going to, uh, touch people and move people in in a certain way and that's what i think i really liked about uh our dad in the Gunj. that uh, i mean these notions of masculinity are you know whether it's shootus as a counterpoint to uh you know deepaks or to vikram, uh, vikram, Dili, vikram. Sorry, the vikram uh, uh you know uh i think there are these men and women who are uh you know make, uh, you know the alpha male uh, the slightly cruel father uh, you know uh uncle uh, the sensitive guy, and, and but you know it's it was not so. What I really liked about her film was it was not so binary. There was also like I I loved playing, for instance, Bonnie, who seemed like a very caring and compassionate person. But there's a certain brand of carelessness that even caring people have, you know, and uh, um, which is in not asking the right questions at the right time, you know, and not being uh, sensitive uh, uh, till the very end. And, uh, you know, Bonnie could have prevented it. Bonnie, after all, was not as unkind as Nandu was or, you know, um, Vikram was. And yet there is, there is some carelessness that the nicest of us uh, have. And we always regret it around the dinner table later after something, you know, disastrous happens. And uh, it questions us. It questions, it, it begs us to question our idea and notion of, are we really that nice? Are we really listening? Are, are we really sensitive to people who, um, you know, are, are actually just waiting for us to ask the right questions? So, but that, I think that has happened because, um, uh, because these are characters that uh, Coco really knew well, and which is why we felt like, we felt what was, what it felt like to be in their head, you know? Um, and that's why it works because it works as a story, it, you know, as opposed to just being an issue. It's very tiring to like, I don't think a filmmaker is a postman who has to go and give a message. And sometimes when a film is just about a message, then it gets very tedious to watch and you feel like you're being lectured. You know, uh, I didn't feel that uh, at all in Death in the Gun. And that was a big relief oh, because yeah. I think it's not just black and white. It was very subtle. It was very subtle and nuanced. Thank you. Thank you for your question. I, I know um, I know there are a number of questions and a number of folks who want to ask questions, but if it's okay with um, Konkana and Tilotama and, Gulsh and Gulshan, maybe we can take about three more questions before we wrap up. Is that all right? 
Sure, sure. I just wanted to say that Tilotama was saying Deepak because that was the original name of the character. And then we changed ah, the later sorry. Vikram. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, sorry. no, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, um, uh, Pulin had a question. Pulin Kinkabala is from Chicago and has a question. You know, we have several uh, members of our audience in different parts um, of the States and, and from India. Hi, so I'm oh, the Windy City. Hi. Yes, hi. Um, wonderfully uh, portrayed all the different uh, roles and the emotional uh, different characters in the movie. <clears throat> uh, you already answered one of my questions about it took 31 days and you had to plan very well every nuance of the scene before you started shooting. As a first movie uh, to direct uh, and then how much time you spend selecting the cast to fit the roles and then once you select experienced cast that you are comfortable with, Gulshan, Telotama, Om Puri, the, the big cast actor, uh, how much latitude do you give them? Is that a anchoring effect that you go through that I've thought so much, I've planned so much, and now there's something else, the character is bringing something else on the scene. And I, that, I just want to see what struggle you go through and then ask same question to Gulshan. My actors Telotama. are going through the struggle now. My actors are struggling because I've told them it has to be this, this, this. You know, then they're like, Ari, then she's not letting us do only what we want to do. You'll have to ask them. <laughs> you never told me anything. Yes, yeah, so I, I, yeah, I never ask them. Question. How do they feel about, did they have a latitude or uh, it was this way or we're going to shoot it again and keep doing what I tell you? Uh, I think she was very clear about what she wanted. But at the same time, we had uh, discussed, we had read and we had done a lot of rehearsals with uh, and workshops before we started filming, which really helped us. And it really helps, uh, and I think it's very it's critical, at least from my point of view, whenever I work on a project, it's very important that I have a clear understanding with the director. Uh, so, because uh, there is a sensibility with which the filmmaker is uh, telling this story, and, and it becomes an actor's uh, obligation to serve that sensibility. If you don't understand that sensibility, then in your head, it's some other movie. And they are trying to make some other movies. So it's very important to understand those sensibilities. So I think um, having discussions, having creative discussions, or generally just having a conversation about something, about film, about what you like, how you see things, about, and uh, which is why I also enjoy um, Coco uh, doing all these fittings and all that because it really helps me understand the sensibility of things. Mm. It's 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 part of it's part of the process, and I really enjoy it, and I don't look at it as oh, I, I don't want to be doing this, do it quickly so I can go home. Uh, it's part of the process and I really enjoy getting into those costumes and seeing myself, looking at myself, oh, the hair is not really right. We need to but don't you feel side. vulnerable at that time? Don't you feel vulnerable no, at that time? No, very vulnerable, yeah. I do feel very vulnerable uh, and uh, sometimes a little bit in the dark also, but then you figure it out. The fun is also to sort of figure it out. Yeah. You know, how, how, how are you going to like, you know, solve these problems? Like, you know, okay, something is not looking right. I'm not feeling comfortable with these pants. They're too high because you're not really used to wearing such high pants anymore. But then you get comfortable because you just, the more you wear them, the more comfortable you become because the character I'm playing should be comfortable in such clothes. Uh, so, so we had a lot of discussions and, the, and the, the, the advantage was also we really got along well with each other, all of us. Oh, that's uh, that also helped because we were staying in the same hotels. We'd like, you know, have lunch and dinner and we'd hang out together. And a lot of us really like the same kind of films and we have you know, similar tastes. Um, so that also really helped. Uh, so um, I, in my experience of working with uh, Konkana was that I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. And I think because I could see her really enjoying it, it was a little difficult for her some days, which I, I could, which we all could see that was really emotional for her and it was really hard. And uh, that made us also, you know, Right. Uh, there's a sense of responsibility that you know we shouldn't like uh, pardon my language but uh, uh, we shouldn't fuck this up for her so we really <laughs> really wanted to because it was so important it was such an emotional process for her and we really didn't want it to be uh, um, any worse than what it was already for her emotionally um, but once and because of all the work that we actually did before we got to filming it it was really easy for me once I got there and it was really wonderful because Tilutama had her own way of doing things. Uh, other actors, their own way of doing things. And I have my own way of doing things. 
but we were so adjusted that it really didn't bother us like you know it's just like really we would just flow we would flow very easily and uh, we would also improvise as in uh, uh, who would allow us uh, to improvise and the only complaint i have was that it wasn't uh, the sound wasn't recorded on like it wasn't sync sound we had to re record everything oh. in the studio later which was very yeah. difficult for a film such as uh, death in the gunch I know it's not very apparent, but a lot of you have this uh, surprised look on your face. That's yeah, what is helping? Yeah. There was a train track right next train to the track house. Oh gosh, yeah. Ta- Ari, there was a train track which would That's run true. on all the different shots every fifteen minutes. Yeah, no, nobody. No. In we fact, it was because of the train. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Really no, no, no. Sure. You can. We won't get into this because this was a tangent. So that that was my experience. That. I didn't yeah. spend so much time. I think we did like two weeks worth of, uh, maybe more, with all the fittings and trials and yeah, the readings and more. discussions and uh, workshop and all that. We did a lot of that before we actually went to uh, Ranchi and then to Madras. So that really helped understand the sensibility of the film, and then just it was easier. Yeah, you know, you really. I mean, I, I love listening to uh, all three of you speak because it really makes us, it transports us to where you guys were. And also, you have such an easy way of talking. You feel like the folks next door. It's so lovely to listen to all of you. It's a lot but of us hear from the local market. Market. Yes, yes, I do want to. I do want to say something, uh, and I, I, I can say it because I've told uh, Konkona this, so it's not any big surprise. But uh, it, it was. Uh, did she? The question was: Did she give us a space as an, as actors to improvise? Uh, initially like i said for me it was a very unique experience uh, uh working with an actor director who not just any actor director an actor director who actually really knows her story has lived the story ha- and has prepared so much and konkana is a planner anyway she has notes for everything in any case so imagine a person like that would make a note for what will i do tomorrow generally would have like color coded diary entries imagine when that person makes a film <laughs> you know so you can imagine the level of preparedness right so like there was the script had like there was like you didn't need to ask questions because the script had so much it was so uh, it, everything was in it uh, and she's an actor herself and she knows that she she knows the beats of the scene she knows what has to unpack in order for the next moment to happen so when i walked in initially initially like i felt uh, i did something and she was like you know like do it this way do it that way and i was like yeah that's great and it's something i even experienced on divakar banerjee's uh, mm-hmm. set you know on day one this sense of the yes. director who knows their script so well that they'll tell you exactly how to inhabit that world and it's really it's fascinating for me but i'm like oh okay i mean you just did that i saw that flicker of something in your face you want me to you know recreate that and you do it a few times but as you start getting comfortable and because you trust your director implicitly and because the director trusts you there there's also a space where i can be like okay don't tell me what to do let me i want to try something i want to try something that uh you know without you telling me without you putting it in my head what this could be how this could be played out and she let me and it was a scene where i remember i saw the frog in in the bathroom and uh, and uh, it's perhaps not what at all what you know i might have overplayed it is perhaps not at all for her sensibility but so i have to say that she did give the space yes uh, yes for me to complain see. about this scene for 3 years <laughs> what what did he say what did he say coco something mean he said you've been complaining for 3 years about the frog scene what, what you've been complaining for 3 years about the frog scene he said No, I've not been complaining at all. But what I'm trying to say is that I was able to tell her as well because, and her the way she took that feedback as well. I'm like, you know, you have a, you know, you're a really wonderful actor. But you know, if you tell me how to do it, then it gets imprinted in my brain because you're such a fine actor that I will become lazy and I will not think what other things I can do. And and because she's so gracious, and because she's not someone who is egotistical. Uh, you know uh, she took that feedback and actually the very next day i sense uh, like you know uh, we you know i could do what i wanted to do and i really admire that because i i think it's terrible when directors become uh, it becomes about power you know because they are the captain of the ship but they need to make their actors feel really comfortable and she really did that so she did 
to answer your question she did give the space uh, uh, even though she knew exactly what she wanted got me in that vein uh, is it easy to work with experienced actor and well known <laughs> actor like om puri or is it easy to work with new actors oh, into you more please can i um, uh, Koko, this is your question yeah yeah but i think rati is saying something i was going to say can i ask on to uh, to answer this and then uh, yeah no um you know the thing is it's not just about what is easy and what is difficult you know some things in life are difficult that's fine sometimes difficult things are very rewarding you can know I, it doesn't matter. you know so it doesn't i wouldn't say the ompuri was very easy. no he wasn't always but he was very interesting it was memorable it was authentic it was unique it was an amazing experience i loved it he made fun of me on set once his cell phone started ringing in the middle of the shot of a period film but it was i have just the best memories and so much like love and warmth when i remember it you know i remember him wearing his lungi standing in the middle of the road in mcclasky guys you make friends every time cars you make friends cars. everywhere you made friends with the local family he made friends everywhere he started living in their house with the local It's family cooking. he was yeah. cooking oh beautiful and i remember so many shots complicated shots where the camera is going to pan all through the room like you know almost 180 degrees which and we never used had, in the film which we never used but he would always have a kaju katli or a laddu which he had always. to hide in the middle of you know, in the middle of the scene the, the camera had just passed me and i'm like oh ji laddu laddu oh ho and then he would just put it there <laughs> my god yeah that's great irfan and om ji we remember today yeah. how nice see Yeah, but it's amazing that somebody who has experienced as him, you know, the ease with which he performs, uh, and that can yeah. come with experience. Amazing. I really yeah. it was really nice to see, and uh, I we must admit that he was in pretty poor health. Uh, we all were quite worried actually. And, yeah, that's true, and he was always up to all kinds of antics and and, yeah. and traveling and working so much all the time. We hated so and oh, that. Yeah, and you know the thing with an experienced actor is there are many basic things that they know, and you don't have to tell them. And then you know, then, then they all and he came up with such fantastic uh, lines and scenes. I don't know about Koya, me, your, your father, or whatever that is his line. That's his line. Yeah. So I couldn't. I was stumped. He improvised it, so I couldn't. I didn't have any answer to that. So I was like, I told Koko like, when the camera shifts, no, like he won't be there. I, I'll come up with an answer. <laughs> No, I, I don't remember. Much. I don't remember this. Uh, folks, I have, I have some quick questions, if I may, um, which you want um, folks to ask. I have a question from Sankhya and then from the cast. Um, Hi, uh, I'm Sankhya. Uh, amazing movie. Hi. Absolutely love what you guys have done. Um, somebody said it's a slow burn it absolutely is very disturbing the end especially so i had a quick question for kokna and the rest because given that we have kids around a similar ages and almost it felt as the movie was going on that there was hope that uh, this kid who's been bullied <laughs> by everyone maybe he'll come out of it um, successful and then at the end of it when he shoots himself I I swear you I I think I I stopped breathing those few minutes I literally it was very disturbing that night I was thinking about it and so for you guys when you were shooting it I know you guys knew the story but when you saw it in actual uh, visual media and you you were there as it was getting shot um, how do you guys handle the emotion that came with it when no, Shotu killed himself no that Thank emotion you. by then is completely gone I think by the time we've come to shooting that that day. If you guys remember, because everyone was in that scene, Gurshan and Tilothu on that scene. We shot it over two, three days. You know, days. So it was really hot. And I had to wear that. Did days. you feel distant to that? <laughs> My God, <laughs> that was so That's powerful. That's better than polo neck that I had to wear, Coco, in that heat. <laughs> <laughs> no, guy is a guy happened. killed himself. <laughs> And that's why we made that a movie. Is, uh, now. I know that kid, that poor kid. I think kid. it was very emotional for uh, Vikrant. That day was very emotional. Yeah, poor Vikrant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It yeah. was very emotional yeah. for me as well. Yeah. It was very yeah. technical for all of us. We had to hit certain marks. 
Yeah. Uh, and Goku would be yelling like, now, uh, like, go on your knees, go on your knees. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just like really technical. And then like... I. I'm a very polite person, by the way. I don't know if this has come through in the conversation with <laughs> actors, but I'm very yeah. politely tell people what I want. Yeah. yeah, I didn't say that you didn't say it politely. No, I fear a wrong impression may have come through. Why Kudos to you guys. Why good picture. But the, the warmth that you guys have for each other really comes through. Yeah. Absolutely. No, Thank you, know, you so much. Day, yeah, mm-hmm. no, I'm sorry we didn't even take it so seriously, but it's just that, you know, by the time we come to that day, I had myself been through that scene so many times, yeah. not just in the, like, finding out questions about what the real incident was. There was a real mm-hmm. incident which happened in my grandfather's house in Mukhtasthi. Wow. Mm-hmm. And where we actually shot Brian's picnic that lunch. <clears throat> So from finding out all the details about what actually happened, talking to all the people who were there at that time, what they remember about what actually happened, to actually plotting it and writing it and then explaining it sometimes to people, you know, in the sense that how will you pull off, pull this off? Because it's not actually a very, uh, uh, I don't know how, if you just read it, if it comes through all the emotions. Yeah. The reading is a lot of description of he walks there, he looks here, you know. So I had been through it a lot already in my head and I knew exactly what, I wanted and luckily we were able to get pretty we much. Were, the, you, were you tempted to change? The scene. We had and rehearsed yeah, sorry, the scene in our workshops as well. Wow. There was no excuse. Uh, yeah. We had a couple of really good uh, rehearsals of this scene. It was very, That's like, right. it a very tense atmosphere we could create in that uh, rehearsal room. Uh, yeah. So I think uh, it became easy for us uh, on the day of the shoot because <laughs> I think a lot of it just came back. We remember that. At least I did. I was remembering what happened. I wish you guys hadn't uh, that Were you tempted to change the end and make him live? Because I was so disturbed with that. But you can change that every day in your life. Oh. Is what wow. I mean. You know what I mean? Yeah. Good answer. We can all change that every day. That's why we had to show it so badly so that we can do it well. Good well point. said. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Mic drop. Yeah. Uh, mic drop. Absolutely. Yeah. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much uh, for your question. <laughs> because, uh, I think this uh, will be the last question. Uh, Vikas, you want to ask your question? Although I do, do think that that was the mic drop was it was a great ending. <laughs> At that point. Because you go ahead. Uh, yes, I have a question. Um, the uh, the insinuation uh, the mother had made made a. a uh, comment about uh, how there's a background behind uh, Chotu uh, about trouble that he was having. And obviously, it, w- it wasn't just pure bullying. There was a background behind uh, a mental issue, uh, depression or something. Uh, and uh, again, back to the same issue. These things are also hidden, not... Uh, not discussed, not treated, not uh, addressed, uh, and, and and suicide is uh, unfortunate uh, outcome to to to, to, to this. Um, so uh, I just want to say that that there should be uh, from mental health issue there should be more uh, more um, stress to towards addressing it. Uh, I think again uh, a lot of Indian families tend to hide it uh, and don't address it. Uh, and I do have one comment. Uh, in current day, uh, in terms of uh, depression and uh, uh, and bullying, I think we have an example of uh, Shushan Singh uh, Rajput and his suicide. I would not like to comment on uh, Sushant Singh Rajput's uh, passing away. I felt that if there was something that he wanted to share with the world, he would have left a note. So I would rather not speculate. Yeah. Okay. But thank you for your observation. Yeah. Um, Kalpa, let's wrap it up with Kalpa. Kalpa, I, I can see you really, really <laughs> quick because we do need to let them go. It's late in yes. India. Uh, yeah. Just one oh, very quick true. question. Uh, thank you so much, Konkana and Gulshan and Tilotma, everyone, and Rathi and team and the Rathuris uh, for this opportunity. Um, 
uh, one question, Konkana. Uh, you know, it was you've directed this beautifully, and we've all talked about it. You've we've heard you. How was how easy or difficult was it to um, direct Tanya, the little one? Uh, did you prepare well for it? How did she respond? You know, if you can throw some light on that. Yeah, she Thank was you. so good. She was very How nice to remember Arya. Yeah. No, actually, you know what? Uh, the character was originally written for a younger girl. The character was supposed to be someone who is six or seven. Um, but uh, <clears throat> but Arya was so good uh, in her audition that I just tweaked that a little bit and made her, you know, like a, a healthy eight-year-old, nine-year-old kind of a, yeah. yeah. Uh, because uh, she's she's very good and I think she's had uh, a lot. Sorry? Very expressive. Very expressive. She's had a fair amount of experience. She has some innate uh, talent as well. So that really helped. She was used to, she was excited also, you know, about, I mean, her parents were there with her. I think her younger brother, she's excited about learning the song. I think she learned it before anyone else did, you know, that uh, yeah. <laughs> train song. And um, so it was actually very uh, easy to work with her. It was quite... Uh, uh, she was very, um, uh, she was obedient and cooperative and um, yeah, it, 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 she, she also enjoyed, I think, the puppies very much. Yeah. You guys remember? Yes, yeah, she, 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 she was done easy. She's yeah, also Coco, her easy, Coco's yeah. very good with kids and uh, yeah. so is, she's also just really good with handling uh, children and kids and I, and I was most terrified about Pony having a child and in fact I spent some afternoons at uh, Gunnar's house just to watch how she's with her you know with Haroon uh, and it's very helpful yeah, you know how, how to not be a smothering kind of mother and yet be a caring one Coco has a lovely balance and I think she she created uh, I mean I saw her the way she would deal with Arya as a young adult like treated her like a young adult uh, and and she was really bright and Coco really uh, yeah, really gave her the space to uh, to be. Lovely, lovely. Lovely, um, thank you, thank um, you. Kankana, did uh, your mom love the film? I think so, yes. I hope, I mean, she usually is very truthful. <laughs> so, so I she, think she liked it. Oh, that's, that's really, that's, yeah, just, yeah. that's lovely. Thank well, you. Thank you, Kankana, a pillow. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Awesome. I'm so sorry I kept you much later than the one hour, but you know, so many questions, and I know people drop off after an hour, but um, there were still so many questions there. That's right, and it was very nice for us to relive some of these experiences. So thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. So much fun. I feel like you. I was there on stage with all of you. You know, just listening to you guys talk and and reminisce about. Uh, about good old times. I mean, I feel like you guys are old friends now. <laughs> it was so lovely. Oh, yeah. Uh, and wow, what a difference you guys are making. And uh, you know, Konkuna with your films and um, uh, the direction was amazing. Can we expect another film from you soon? Let's see. You know, let's see. If I'm excited by and convinced by something, then perhaps. Yeah. And if I can get yeah. money for it, <laughs> etc. Yeah, yeah. We find the money. Get excited. <laughs> Kind of money Thank for, you. Maybe something in the U.S. The ne your next production in the U.S. will introduce you to some okay. producers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Konkuna. That was lovely. Uh, thank you so much for making the time because I know it's not easy. Um, this has been such a great experience. Thank you, Telotama as well and Gulshan. Uh, this mm. is so great for our community as well because they look forward to it. They get to. Um, talk to you to ask you questions to actually you know see what you guys are like right and I would uh, like to add one thing it yeah. made us feel closer to home certainly really yeah like yeah. talking oh, to you nice. all it felt so close to being like to India and watching the same movies that we do like talking about it it was a surreal experience for me yes I it's the accent it's isn't it it's the accent <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we all slip into our Indian accents, don't we? Um, you know, something we, we uh, seem to be good at doing, slipping into these different accents. But thank you so much, um, Konkana. Thank you so much, Tilotama. Thank you, Golshan. It was lovely. Please keep in touch. Thanks uh, for having us. Thank you. Uh, we thank you for loving us. Everyone, stay yeah. well. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Wear a mask. And, uh, yeah. Please wear a mask. <laughs>
Please wear a mask. That's right. Please wear a mask. Okay. Thank you so much for the next time. You come to our Thank festival. you, Konkana. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rati. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Coco, for making this film, for bringing us together. Oh, thanks, Tilly. Thanks, Gulshan. Chalo, see you guys. We'll thanks, talk. You. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Rati. Bye. 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 Fabulous. Thank you, Rati. Thank you.